This character's name is Son Olmos with a few mixed opinions. But I really wanted to go back to his very first adventure just to give you an idea of how that came to be and why. So let's start. In a nutshell, Bubsy is a bit too simplistic for its own good. Especially given the time that it came out during the years in the Snares and Mega Drive and many other consoles um, and computers as well. In the heyday that every company and their dog and their dog's dog were attempting to try and make a corporate mascot in the hopes of nailing those big bucks. The ones that were clearly visible with the likes of Sonic and Mario who were taking the world culturally by storm. You see, Nintendo had Mario, uh, Sega had Sonic, Atari, to a lesser degree, although they were mostly fading out of existence at this point, still had Pac-Man, um, and Amiga had, really at the time, it was Zool. Zool was being heavily promoted for them. And Titus, well, they had failure. <laughs> Titus the Fox. That is such a... <laughs> I'm not going to go into that one yet. Yet here, Accolade thought they'd have a go. They they were ticking off their big book of wildlife. You can see them opening in the background, looking for an animal that hadn't been copyrighted yet. Yeah, they, They're going gradually through. So It had to be obscure enough to redefine how it could work in a platformer without being too visually characteristic and well known that people knew how it should act. So it's a good job that they'd gone through all the bees and really wasn't it, you know, rather go through the whole book. And there's Bubsy the Bobcat. You can't run. Bear with us on this one. <laughs> and you can't attack any enemies directly head on. Instead, jumping on the heads, yeah, that's the order of the day, we're gonna stick with that one. And you can glide around from great heights. Which sounds great in principle. Yeah, you can see they've worked on the idea of Raccoon Mario or Tanuki Mario in this set. Um, but the execution here never really hit the mark. It often enables you to be hit by an enemy or find one pit in an area of safe platforms. Which, I kid you not, is more often than not. But graphically... It's it's actually quite lovely. Yeah, it's it's a lovely, bright, colourful game at the time. It was packed in, if I remember correctly, with a Super Mega Drive. They sold it singly for quite a while, and then I think the likes of Virgin, doing the publishing side, I think, had this bright idea of packing it in with I think the first James Pond as a double pack. So they're doing like thirty nine ninety nine, bought you both games. Yeah, which. £20 each was an absolute bargain in the years when most cartridges were looking at shy of 39 dollars in shops. But, yeah, I'm sidetracking a little bit there. <laughs> Control-wise, Bubsy is a unique animal. Not by skill set, it's more by the controls feel very unresponsive when you want to do any sort of pixel-perfect precision movements. It's a bit like driving a tank in ice is building up momentum and then you get that speed going and then you can't really control yourself if you put the foot down too much yeah it is it, in a sense it's great Bubsy is a good character in design style and once you get used to the control system and your little foibles around it, it, it can work. You also got to remember, it's extremely generous with the amount of continues and extra lives. So you're going to start off with, because he's a cat, nine lives. <laughs> Lovely pun. And to be fair, every one of those you're going to need before you get to the end of this game. Mark my words. Level design on this game, and this is something that people do overlook whenever they trash a Bubsy game. The levels are absolutely superb. They're actually opposite 
of what I was expecting with this absolute travesty of a mascot. Especially the whole mascot genre in its entirety. And yeah, it does show that the team, when they were at the drawing board on this one, they were doing their research. They utilised the idea of doing the multiple path method, similar to Sonic to Kai players, through levels in such a way that you know, if you felt that if you chose a route in any particular way, yeah, you still had feeling of a unique perspective or a unique design. It made replayability a bit more fun. Yeah, if you're unsure of getting through a, a particularly difficult track, go a bit higher, go a bit lower. Yeah, there might be a better obstacle you could challenge and face and get past. And it, there was no real feeling of a harsh barrier, almost like the paywall of you get nowadays where you had to hit it, get good, get past it. So it was forgiving. I love it for that. And it this is the most important thing. It stopped the game being frustrating and it kept just pushing you that little bit better to get a little bit more forward, just see what the next level did contain. And yeah, later levels do get on the lazy side. We touched upon Wayne's World a lot earlier, and that is a true how lazy your programmers can get when it comes to level design. This was not like that. A little bit lazy, a little bit regurgitated on the assets and particular tropes of the platforming route through felt similar, and there was a little bit of duplication there. But, and this is the thing. Whenever there's a huge amount, when some of the popular on the market becomes massively successful, there's always going to be a glut of copycats. And when there's a glut of copycats following that trend, something is always going to be at the bottom of the pile. And Bubsy the cat was that mascot that hit the bottom. The main reason for this really stems from Accolade really trying to do Earthworm Jim slash Sonic. And yeah, design a mascot that wasn't really going to be in one particular game. It was going to be in a feature of games and then push that towards a cartoon link up series. You can tell if Brother Fate had a tie in line yeah, of the third kind. And we do see this series of formula progress quite quickly until we obviously went to Bubsy 3D. The absolute classic that it was. <laughs> and you can see it's a clear attempt to push into the kids' market. It's designed that way. And it massively fell back, yeah, badly. And on a side note, it is worth searching YouTube for the pilot. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> It just wasn't well received. I suppose... Yeah, if you were to look at it from an American perspective, Bubsy was the E.T. of the mascot bubble in the industry. It was the one animal mascot that burst the whole investment cycle in that age where everybody wanted to try and get something to associate with. It's what killed off the mascot platforms and really helped start the killing off of the platform genre and in many ways also helped escalate that depreciation of the 2D industry it's quite an achievement when you think of it but yet the world is a little less fun now in summary Bobbity is a quite simply a two out of five. It, but it's a generous two out of five. It Bobbity's this It's a wonderful game that it could have been more. It should have been more. The first game had the promise that it could have been better. And I'm lowering that mark down to two out of five purely because it didn't do the character the service it deserved and should have deserved. Instead, we had 
some absolute dire games and I'm looking at you Disney particularly with some of the ones you released that came through that shouldn't have been treated any better and any more favourable in this one it's mediocre but I do urge people to play it at least to look at it look at it from a level design perspective and look at it from a from the architecture point of view it's a great lesson into some of the nice tricks that a platform genre could have utilised and still do utilise we hate Bubsy for many a wrong reason and I think that's really should have been its 3D aspects of later later parts but for the 2D one I think we should really give them a second chance in some respects. If you're bored of something to play, it's, it's well worth a day just revisiting this character and just to see what the fuss was about. For more reviews like this, check out that retrovideogamer.com for the latest news, reviews, retro footage, retro reviews, and everything else in between. Until then, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.